Aaron of Aaron C is on the line here. Oops! Oh, I hung up on uh, Jaime. Hi, call back, Jaime. Of Aaron C. Aaron in Utah. What's up, man? Well, I don't really have much. I, I was just hopping on to try to counter. Uh, is, that a, is that a thing we can do on this show? Is hop on to. Try well, to if somebody said a statement. Caller, Sometimes I, yeah, as, as the spirit leads, I may, I may go into that a little bit, yeah. Uh, okay, because I was just going to just deal with that last caller. I mean, pretty much that mentality that he has is pretty much, I would say, the average mentality of the average American um, black. Um, you know, they simply just expect you to just kind of bow down and, you know, try to, you know, they want, want you to be schooled by them, you know on uh, some of these points that make no sense and he was mentioning reparations and it's like dude you already got your reparations I know. You're good. And, uh, and there was nothing I'm to repair to there was nothing one. to repair it was well, not the this thing is, like, it, in my it, opinion there the was nothing to repair breakdown, if you look at the welfare state if you look at how much money disproportionately i mean i've lived in several major cities and uh one comes to mind in particular especially baltimore you know, if you drive through the hood during the middle of the day, especially on a summer day, everyone's out chilling on that stoop. I mean, we're talking, you know, about cities where like half the people aren't even working, you know, but they're somehow being sustained. And it's like, dude, do you get to live in this paradise? Even our yeah. country's poorest people are the world's richest poor people. And um, so yeah. their reparations. They live amazing. better than yeah, kings. I feel like they live better than me, Hake, personally. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I got to I got On a physical level. Get... Spiritually, they're, they're miserable, and they're, they cannot appreciate and enjoy it. Um, but, and That's also, true, but I mean... haven't you, have you seen, I feel like I've seen this, like, chart or table showing the, the net cost of a, of a black is something like three-quarters of a million dollars to the uh, society, whereas the net uh, benefit of a of a white contribution of a white is like a quarter million dollars, something like that, or seven hundred fifty thousand. I don't know. There's, but uh, you know, you know how people produce value or drain value on society. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Are they going to repair us for that? They're not repairing. That's, they're, that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, if reparations has been paid. If you and, and the reason why again is because there's an extremely large in the hood. The average hood cat gets an SSI check. Um, you know, the state that I'm in, you know, it's, it's very, uh, you know, it's pretty white and, uh, there's, you, you don't run into anyone that's not employed here. I mean, that's just not a thing. Everybody yeah. here is working. It's, it's our mantra. You know what I mean? The beehive state, you are worker bee. Right. Uh, very, the, only un- the, work the, only, the only unemployed people, the only unemployed people around, um, they might be in my state, of course, are going to be the native Americans who are truly lazy, who truly just sit back mm, uh, yeah. and, and, and just watch TV and collect that bread. And that's so um, destructive but, to them. It's no wonder that, oh, man, it's bad. And, 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 and here's the break. I had some American so, Indian, I had some American Indian neighbors. I've told this story many times. These, uh, it was two boys and they were kind of fatter and they were grown like men, basically. And they were in the, they were getting the money, right? The Indian money, casino money or something. But then they got kicked out of their tribe, and then they had to go to work. Their lives improved. They started working, and they became, uh, th- their lives improved. So that's t- that welfare stuff is evil. Dude, Native Americans, I'm telling you, they got it made. I mean, are we not the most generous conquerors, my brother? I mean, <laughs> I they know. got it. You know, you know the Palms Casino in Vegas? The Palms Casino in Vegas is owned by a group of 200 Native Americans, a very small tribe, yeah. two hundred people splitting the money from the Palms Casino. Right, that their 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 top two floors to to rent is the most expensive hotel room in the world at seventy eight grand a night, something like that. And I mean, these people are just taking. But you know, the best way you can break it down, Ake, is um, you take a state like mine. You look at these, you know, predominantly Caucasian states. We give way more in tax money than we receive. You know what I mean? We contribute to this country, and. Yeah, I mean, that is the reparations. They have to understand that that's it. Do you think that they were even wronged in the first place by slavery? Yeah, I'm not, listen, I'm not, as a nationalist, I'm not one of these people that's just like, oh, they don't deserve, you know, they don't deserve nothing. This ain't their country. They need to go back to Africa. I'm definitely not one of those people. Right. Uh, 
You know, but, they, but they every, unfortunately were taken over here as slaves, right? And they, they, they this, this country's just as much theirs as it is mine. I'll easily proclaim that they've been here for a couple hundred years, yeah, uh, without a doubt. So I'm not. But I'm how not about on that? Put but that, but yeah. should they do, should do they is who should should they get reparations from slavery? Like slavery? Does slavery is slavery a wrong that they should have gotten reparations for it? Unless there's like really specific examples that can maybe trace back, but on a whole, I, I would say no. I yeah. mean, but again, I still do I still do try to see things from their point of view. Hey, again, you know, they, they, they were enslaved for a while. They they have there's a massive identity issue, um, because, you know, they were given our last names, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So there there is some there there is a there is a, a struggle that I, I would say I can't just ignore that. I, I gotta be fair. I got to observe both sides. My, as far as the reparations, you know, but um, my thing on uh, their identity issue, your identity is more immediately gotten from your own parents than from your broader race and culture. Um, so if your parents are together and moral, upright people, that's more important to your well-being and your sense of confidence and your, uh, well, your, your, your ability to succeed in life as a normal human being than uh, identifying with the race. But blacks have forsaken having married fathers and mothers and being true Christians. They're phony Christians. And so they're s- trying to skip the family thing and join, go right straight to the race thing as their brotherhood, as their family. Well, I agree with you that you know, parenting can have a profound effect. However, um, I couldn't ignore the racial thing 100%. Are you telling me that you, you, you don't think it's, um, you think it's just as easy for the average uh, Somali uh, young man coming up, you know, as far as being prideful, et cetera, compared to the average, like, let's say Norwegian or Japanese person, I mean, coming from a culture that's, you know, achieved a lot, you know, et cetera, you don't, you don't think there's a little bit of maybe, maybe a challenge there. If I was an Aborigine from Australia, right. I would really struggle because it's like, man, my people have just gotten annihilated. Uh, we haven't accomplished anything. I'm not really proud of who I am, you know, and I, and I think that that plays a role. Uh, and if you look at a lot of them, you know, pro-black leaders now, especially one in particular named Tariq Nasheed, he's just making a bunch of stuff up. Right. I mean, he's, he's saying that blacks literally invented everything. And <laughs> I whites know. just literally stole it all. You know, we literally that's, just stole that. That's an example of what I'm talking about. That's an example of what I'm talking about. Identifying with people who, who uh, were before you who may or may not have done anything good and, and rather than uh, being a responsible, like... Back in the slavery days, up from slavery, the book by uh, Booker T. Washington, he encouraged black Americans to make men especially to work, learn skills, make themselves useful in the world so that they could uh, function well and do okay in life. Then you don't necessarily have to look to some uh, effeminate attachment to a racial identity. Because that's sort of a woman thing to be all team, team, this or team that. It's there is some there is some truth to it, and of course, different cultures uh, develop better practices for themselves. Uh, clearly, but uh, yeah, I just see it as how it could be a challenge. We all live in the United States now, and it should all just be Team USA. Uh, and again, it's just as much their country is, is, is mine, without a doubt. I can, you know, say that without hesitation. Um, but they just don't seem to view it that way. And I'm kind of right. I'm kind but of what getting, does that mean? I'm it's their get, country as much as yours. What does that mean? I mean, it's both of our countries. They, they've been here. I mean, they, uh, you know, they, they help contribute to some industries. Uh, you know, they, they, they helped along the way without a doubt. I mean, and, and even if they didn't, let's pretend they were just lazy and did nothing. They've still been here for a few hundred years. I would definitely say that qualifies as uh, yeah, I don't, your I, country. I don't see black Americans, American blacks, as foreigners, although they have a complete, they've devolved into this completely different yeah. and more corrupt culture. Yeah. 
But I don't and see I don't them as foreigners that should be kicked out necessarily. Uh, I, if they yeah, want to go I, I to do. Africa, I'm glad to, if they leave because they're ingrates, many of them. But I, I think if a separation were to occur, it could just happen. We live on a massive landmass here. This landmass yeah. is absolutely humongous. So, you know, if anything were to happen, you know, with, with separation, that there's no need you know, for them to go back. But there's just something I noticed, man, and that is just that. I'm under the understanding now, the impression that um, they're simply just never going to see. Yeah, I mean, their the, the they're, devil's, they're the devil's busy in their yeah. minds. Aaron, yeah. it's fun talking with you, man. I appreciate you. I got to run. Yep, take it easy. All right, you too. Bye.